I don't want thing. There's probably a lot of people out there that wouldn't expect to ever see me driving a brand new Ford. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> What's up, guys? Welcome back to another video. Just doing a little bit of work or maintenance or whatever you want to call it on the old Ford here. Because as you guys know, you know Fords take work; they take maintenance. It's just the uh, it's just the nature of owning a Ford. Just kidding, guys. We're changing out headlights. You know, nothing too big. Now I must say though. Ford did a much better job back in the 90s on uh, the ease of changing headlights than uh, definitely the new Chevys. I'm not sure how the new Fords are, but something tells me they're probably a pain in the dick too because they're cramming a bunch of crap under the hoods of these things nowadays. Now if you guys saw the title of this video, you guys are probably freaking out, you know? Is the old D-Max Rhino converting to the ways of the Ford? Or you Ford owners might be like, what's well, about damn time you are getting yourself a Ford? Well that being said, let me kind of put this into perspective for you guys. So Chevy kind of did some shitty stuff and so did GMC, um, which obviously it's the same thing. But so on my new truck, I'm looking to get either a, uh, you know, Denali or a high country. And we've been considering Chris just rolled up on the fat scooter. Get over here, bro. Uh, I don't know if you're going to get in, <laughs> get in camera. Hey, Chris has been, Chris has been cruising the neighborhood on his fat scooter. You still loving it? Yep. Still loving it. So anyways, been, uh, been considering going dually for the next truck. If you go uh, GMC and you want to go dually and you want to go Denali, you can't get the pure white, the Summit white, right? Well, we're not 100 percent sure yet. Well, we're pretty sure, according to their website and according to one of the dealers I've talked about, uh, you can't do that. And also, if you go Chevy and you go High Country and you go High Country dually, it's the same shit. You can't get the Summit white. They only offer like three colors, and I think it's the red, uh, the blue, and whatever that brown is that they call sandstone. I don't even know what they call it. Um, that sucks because I want another Summit white truck because they're beautiful. Do I want to do it? I don't know. I think I want a dually for this next truck. Go so black. I don't want to go black. You went black and you regret it, don't you? No. Oh, you don't regret it one bit. Eh. All those car wash scratches, you don't regret one bit. Well, I, you need a good detailer. Well, why do you take it to the car wash? We got a good detailer. A good detailer is busy. He's not. Time. You just never call him. Oh. True. So every time Chris goes to the car wash, he never learns his lesson. He goes to the car wash all the time, and every single time he comes back, we find new scratches, have to call the detailer out to fix all those scratches, so he keeps the detailer in business and employed, so I guess that's a good thing. Anyways, I do not want to go black. I want to go with another white truck. Um, they're easier to keep clean. You don't see the scratches, so that's the route we're going to go, and that being said, like I said, I can't get a dually in the high country or the Denali uh, in the Summit White, and I've seen a lot of trucks out there that have the badges of the Denali HD and their Summit White and their dually, and those guys are lying. Same with the high country, unless I'm wrong, and I don't think I'm wrong. So we're going to go check out Ford. We're going to see what Ford has to offer. Like I said, I know I'm brand loyal, and I tell you guys this all the time, but I'm also open-minded, and uh, you know, Ford has just been, I guess, leading the way when it comes to like convenience features. Uh, I think they have, I don't know, do they have massage seats in the new uh, Platinums, I'm pretty sure they do. Something along those lines. So shit like that, if you really want to go with a really cushy truck, um, I hear that's the way to go. So like I said, being open-minded, I say we go to the Ford dealership, let's check them out, and hey, maybe I'm convinced that I need to buy a Ford. So after it took way too long to get those damn headlights on, I think I take everything back I said about Fords being way easier. The stupid like double alignment system to get the headlights on with these things is a pain in the dick when like these aftermarket headlights are just a little bit uh, a little bit bigger or smaller than the factory ones from back in the day. Sorry for that close-up shot. So we're gonna grab camera battery here. We're gonna hop in Chris's truck. So Chris is very uh, graciously let me use his truck pretty much anytime I want to, right Chris? You're the nicest guy ever. Everybody says you look really mean in the videos though. Like you're always staring me down from behind and shit like you want to hit me every time I'm saying shit. What's up with that? <laughs> Chris is just a very quiet, reserved guy. Well, check it out, Chris has one of the new work for it. We're calling it the Tweed Hat. For those of you guys that are not fans of the mesh back, we got the original snapback, like Chris is wearing right now. Chris, oh, oh he just tossed back the, uh, <laughs> tossed back the limited edition black and gold. He's rocking the Tweed with the sick black and red. You guys can get those over at workforwardapparel.com and a lot of you guys' favorite hats are back in stock, so check it out. Put the link right here. Hold on, look it. I even got my own setting now in his truck. Cause this guy likes to sit in the back seat, but he's also what, 6'3 on a good day? On a good day. On a good day, he's 6'3. So if you guys don't know, Chris has been my homie forever. Um, they, oh shit, why'd your truck shut off? Or is it still running? Oh, it's still running. <laughs> Dude, you need an exhaust on this thing. This thing's quiet. Uh, me and Chris met back in high school. 
we were driver's ed back in high school and then we were gonna fight each other and then we became best friends. So that's pretty much, I'm sure a lot of you guys are uh, have the same story. You know, your best friend was somebody you're gonna fight at some point. So that's how that rolls. Chris rolls with me for everything. We were actually out last night uh, on a 24 hour, I guess, dog rescue mission. Some of you guys know the story about my dog and how, you know, people came together to help find it. So I'm a big believer in paying shit forward and when it came to uh, another dog that needed to be rescued, you know, me and this guy, we, uh, we jumped in to help. She was deemed super aggressive. She was uh, stuck in a drainage canal for, we had confirmed at least a week. Some people said six weeks, we don't know. So uh, we went, set up a trap, and were able to uh, coax her in and get her out of there. I'll cut to a little bit of video of that now while we drive over to the Ford dealer. I don't trust her not to come no, get your heels. All right, come on this solid piece that you're standing on. Do we want to wrap? Man, you ever just feel like you're in a foreign <laughs> land? <laughs> I couldn't even tell you guys the last time I've been to a Ford dealership. I don't even when I don't even know if I've ever been to a Ford dealership. It feels, it feels so strange here. All right, so for you guys that are out there YouTube and are just want to start YouTubing, um, you know it's really weird going into public places and trying to YouTube. You know because you're trying to act normal, but it's hard because everybody's staring at you with cameras. Now to make that easier, don't go and film anybody that doesn't necessarily want to be filmed. Like if you're going to walk up to a salesman and he freaks out with the cameras there, don't really force it. Find somebody that's more comfortable being on camera. <laughs> Look bro, this Ford up here wants to commit suicide man, it just wants to jump. Well they got Raptors. I'm assuming they got Platinums here. How are you folks doing? Good, how are you? Well, I'm trying to trade that piece of junk GMC in for a Ford. Doing? I'm Nathan. Nice Ryan, to meet you. nice to meet you. I'm Nathan. Nice Chris. to meet you, Chris. Um, looking for a F-150 or a F-250? Minimum F-250. I want to see what the fully loaded Platinums have to offer. Um, and hopefully you don't mind being on camera, I do YouTube no, no, and all no, that no, stuff. Please, so. come with me. Much appreciated. I can't find my hat. I can't find my hat. Definitely need to work for a hat. I'm going to take you upstairs where you can look at some of the FPPs. Are we going without your hat? I can't find it, man. Oh, that's all right. All right, we'll go without the hat. You're going to notice, and I'm glad you stopped by because you're a Chevy rider and everything else. I want you to see the roominess of the F-250 compared to a Chevy. Okay. So you can see how much bigger the F-250 is. Okay. What so are the... This is the Platinum and this is the Lariat. I got a couple of Lariats. I got a little problem here. Dude, we need to lift these things so you can fit around them. So when we were walking over here, Chris kind of found his dream car, dude. Let's, let's go show him your dream car. If we don't get hit by this Mustang, you guys want to watch out for these Mustang owners. So, <laughs> Chris starts tapping me as we're walking over to go look at the Platinum. And, uh, Go ahead, bro. Show them your dream car, dude. Oh, dude. I love this thing. Woo! Damn, girl. I can see you riding on that. I don't know if you fit in that. See if it's open. Oh, man, that's a classic. They're not going to leave that thing open. Somebody might try and steal that. So the thing I liked about walking up into here is, uh, you know, back, I want to say, when I bought my last truck was, what, three years ago or something like that? I went to dealerships and just nobody was taking me seriously. I said, hey, here's a list of everything I want. You know, I'm willing to pay, let's make this happen. And then I just couldn't find a salesman that would really like take me seriously. Uh, kind of like, you know, really put in the effort to get me the truck I wanted. And it was, a, it was a really weird vibe. You know, I come from like the older days where you couldn't walk onto a car lot without getting hounded by a bunch of salesmen and everybody just trying to make a deal no matter what it took. So I think it was obviously because I was young, I looked young, whatever. Anyways, I like walking onto this lot right now and the guy just instantly I say, hey, I want the most expensive truck you guys have, let me look at that. And he takes me seriously. And that's, you know, I don't know, that plays, that plays big into my decision of whether or not I want to buy a truck. And I get it, I get it. You see a young guy coming in and he wants the most expensive vehicle you have on the lot. I mean, it can get weird, but if I did that in business, you know, I walked into somebody's house and they said, hey, I want $300,000 worth of work done to my house and I said yeah well looking at your house I don't think you're gonna want that or I don't think you can afford that there's no way I'd do you know I'd be a shitty businessman take everybody seriously because you never know you know you never know can't judge a book by its cover you never know what somebody's gonna have or what somebody's gonna bring to the table just by the way they look it's open so they already come with the come with the drop down steps which is nice yes has a panoramic roof and if you want me to hold that for you 
Ah, hold it for you. You're gonna hold it for me? Oh, look at that. Go ahead. Go ahead. All right, see, look at it. They want to sell the truck and they view the cameraman for Absolutely. me. I, I appreciate that. Absolutely. How do you feel? I like it. It seems up tall. So just remember and extend out. Nice. To see your trailer, see where your trailer is going. Right. If you don't have the trailer, everything extends back in. Have those auxiliaries for that. Nice. Now, when you go to the panoramic roof, there is a button in the middle. This one? Yes, sir. Did I just press the middle it's button? It's just one touch, that's all. All right, all right. So, only one touch would go all the way halfway. Now, if you go one more touch, it will go all the way. It doesn't like me. It is, it's on the side of it. Side of it? Yes. This one? Yes. Ah. You see it? I don't know which one. I can't see it from this one. Eager. There we go. We got it. Yes. That camera in the front. I don't know if you can see the button right there. This one right here. Yes, sir. Go ahead and press it. So that one is exactly uh, shows you the front of the vehicle. Now, if you, you see that? Yeah. So the the end. And you're gonna like this. We talked about safety. The passengers that are sitting in the back, even their seat belts, there's airbag in them. In the seat belt. Inflatable belt. Nice. Never even knew that was a thing. Enough is space for three adults to sit back here. That's my that's my tester right there. He's a big guy. Yes, you are. You comfortable? Yeah. Not all voice activated navigation. You get the uh, blind spot radar on this vehicle. One thing I like about this. Nice. With the flashlight to see better, you have a camera to control your box on top. This is the... Uh, this is the Lariat. So Lariat would be one step below the platinum. Take a look at the Lariat interior now. Okay. Yeah, please. So we're one step below platinum here with the Lariat. So once again, the features on this one does not change tremendously from what you were looking at. Okay. Same okay. features. Yes. Now what's the... Let me get a second. Look at this. Look at the sticker of both of these. So okay. you open it. So the sticker on this one is right behind me. Okay. And what you're looking at is... So... 76. 76 on this one and then you come over to this one. The one step down, the lariat, a couple different things here. So 73, so we go. We'll let Chris drive the step. See if he breaks the tailgate. Go. Looking good up there, man. How's the weather up there? <laughs> nice. Nice breeze. Yeah. All right, so we'll get Chris a job as a Ford model. <laughs> hey, you can work at the shows. Show off the, the tailgate for everybody. Okay, so. We gotta get you a little skimpier of an outfit if you're gonna do that. Won't go in till you... you gotta push the handle in. I broke it. What one are you interested in? Well, I'd like the Platinum more. I mean, okay, for a three grand more, you might as well go fully loaded. Absolutely. I'm gonna take you guys on a little ride with me. Okay. Where, where are we sitting? Who's driving? Are you taking us down below? Yeah, you guys can. Uh, okay. I'll hop in. I'm nervous. I don't <laughs> right? I don't like being driven. And you will be the one who's going to be test driving it? Yes. Fantastic. So it seems like for the same price, it's 76000 So if you go with like a fully loaded high country, you're going to be in the $70,000 range. But it seems like Chevy and GMC just aren't throwing in the same features that have been out on cars forever like the little blind spot monitoring system um the i guess adaptive cruise control all that shit i mean even the push to start which i've kind of said i never liked um but you know it's 2017 and you know we're looking at 2018s too this is obviously 2017 but i think for 70 grand chevy ought to start throwing these features in and you guys can uh i guess gripe about how you don't need features you want a real truck yada 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 well, for your 70 grand, you feel like you ought to be getting your money's worth. And I feel like Chevy just isn't necessarily, you know, kind of going the extra mile to make sure you get your money's worth. Now, that being said, 
Chevys also have steel body panels. <laughs> Safety first. Now they're saying there's 452 airbags in this thing, apparently. The rear seat belts have airbags built into them as well, which is pretty gnarly. Never seen that before. But, uh, you know, we'll see. Let's take. You adjusted it? Yeah, I just adjusted it for my height. Oh, well, there you go. We're the same then. We're good. I'm 5'11. Okay. I got one inch on you. Alrighty. Alright. We're good. We're. We'll say the steering feels a little stiffer. Yeah, I mean, this is a super duty. Gotcha. Mind if I get on it a little bit? Absolutely. Go ahead. Let's do it. Pulls up hills pretty good. Absolutely. I can feel the steering wheel vibrate right there. Chevy has it in the seat where the seat vibrates. Uh -huh. Ford has it in the uh, the steering wheel when you start to veer out of your lane. Now you're saying it'll correct it for you? Absolutely. What do you think? I like it. I like it. Let me lower the, lower the seat a little bit here. Uh, you know, they're nice. They're nice, big, tall trucks. I mean, I've always said Ford has always had good looking trucks. They've always had a lot of great features. Yeah. Um, it's just a matter of what's under the hood and when, what engine you're getting. It, what I'm still on the fence is whether or not I want a dually. Um, I'm not sure yet. So I that's- I have a dually in the lot, I'll show it to you. You like that GMC over there? You got that thing. You can, you can park it right here. Well, I definitely think the, the Platinum is the way to go. Um, like I said, I just need to decide whether or not I want to go dually or the single rear wheel. Um, which it sounds like if I go dually, it'd have to be ordered, which Do is... you have the space for the dually? I have the space at the house, it's just a matter of parking. <laughs> you, want, you want to buy that GMC, Chris? <laughs> Chris wants to buy his truck back. Is always my favorite part about being at a dealership. Chris is loving it, hanging out. So they're on the hunt right now to see if they can find either the Platinum Dually or Platinum Single Rear Wheel, rear wheel in the white. Um, see what's out there, see what's available, and then obviously it comes down to you know a few more decisions to make and you know run a number, see what makes sense. So hate to leave you guys on that note, but this is also going to be a really boring video if you guys just sit here through all that crap. So guys, I want to appreciate everybody that's been watching. If you have not subscribed, please click the subscribe button now. For all of you that are subscribed, thank you. Give this video a like. And uh, yeah, don't forget to check out Work Ford Apparel. Thanks guys, later. Roll the outro. Real quick guys, before we roll to the outro, I was just sitting here editing this video and I realized it really, really looks like D-Max Rhino is about to become P-Stroke Rhino. That just sounds fucking horrible. Um, don't worry guys, we still gotta go look at the Chevys and GMCs. I haven't made a decision yet at all, that's for sure. Um, so don't uh, don't get too worried that there's gonna be a name change or any of that shit anytime soon. You know, there's still a lot that has to go into this decision. So with that guys, now let's roll the outro. Damn. Uh. Yeah. Uh. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah.